Okay, welcome. Uh, here we are at Flyover Tech Fest with uh, Katie Patterson from Happy Medium, talking about uh, strategies to uncover talent in flyover country. Katie, welcome. So um, do us a favor, tell us a little bit about Happy Medium, who you are, what you do, and uh, give us some perspective. Yeah, thank you. Happy Medium is a digital agency. We focus on web and product development, as well as the media and creative to tell those stories. We um, will turn 10 in March, and we are in downtown Des Moines. Wonderful. So how large a team do you have? We are right around 20. Are they all local here in Des Moines, or are they remote as well? Um, we have a few team members, in uh, one in Indiana and one in Arizona, and the rest are here in Iowa. So obviously with COVID things have changed, but did you, so you manage remote work as well before COVID. Um, how about now during COVID as well? How do you handle remote work? Yeah, I think the question to how do you handle remote work is such a different answer uh, pre-COVID and then there's post-COVID. For us, our team was allowed to work remote uh, before COVID happened. And so for we were very fortunate as um, relative to other companies and our ability to make that transition quickly and seamlessly when um, our leadership ultimately decided to not be in office um, anymore. And so our guideline for remote work prior to COVID was after um, working here a year, you were allowed to work remote whenever you wanted. And our only guideline was we wanna see your face sometimes during the week. We still certainly see a value in um, in-person connection and collaboration, but um, didn't feel the need to put, you know, strict parameters on amount of time or hours, especially having two different types of team members, those that are full-time remote and then those that are here um, in Iowa. Now in COVID, uh, our office only has our leads in it currently a few days a week. And um, and then everyone else is, is still remote um, indefinitely. Wow, that's great. So congratulations on the anniversary. Um, growing from one employee to 20 in just under a decade, do you have any specific strategies that you've used to find talent in flyover country? I've probably found more that don't work well for me, but that's part of the um, learning and growing. You know, I think that for us, we're so not only talent focused, but values focused has become something that we've really evolved our hiring process to focus on. So um, even if it's the top best, most peak talent, if they aren't aligned with our four core values of um, curiosity, happiness, integrity, and teamwork, then, uh, then we would consider that a misalignment and really putting weight to that as well. And so that's been a big um, transition, even part of our hiring process, the final step for um, candidates, for the very few end candidates, is um, doing a challenge. So it'll be a challenge that some, somehow relative to what work you would be doing here for us, it gives the candidate an opportunity to sure that what they're, you know, getting into is a right fit or what they're looking for, and also gives us a chance to see that talent, that individuals um, perform or just learn a lot more about them other than just having like traditional interview conversation. Part of that uh, challenge, like I said, is, is of course like reflective of what work you would be doing here. Um, but another part of that challenge is, is um, values-based and, and engaging and us learning more about you with that. And so I think that's been a really big difference in the beginning I was hiring just so focused on um, implementation only or skill set only or resume only. And um, having a much more wholesome approach has really proved to be a better fit for us. Wow. Yeah. So have you found that the values-based approach has been limiting to find talent here in such a small talent pool? Um, I think that it's been really positive. I think it's helped when you are down to those two final candidates uh, and it's helped be that like final threshold of at the end of the day, probably at that point, both candidates would be able to execute the work um, if you're that far in an interview process, but it just is that extra um, best fit 
alignment that I think makes a big deal. It also, when we're so values focused during the interview process, gives us a chance to reiterate with the candidates what, what those values are, what those priorities are. So when they start, um, because our values are such a part of our day-to-day -day culture, it um, is already normal for them and they're expectant. So, um, you know, when we're talking about um, nailing a project and really bringing teamwork to the table because that's one of our core, core values or how we're responding to a client and making sure that's always integrity based. Um, these are their standards that have to live within them both personally and professionally in order to be successful. So obviously, as I mentioned, talent pool the size in Des Moines, Iowa, from a acquiring talent perspective, how have you handled diversity? Yeah, that is such a great question. I would say this year we are really challenging ourselves to, of course, as all companies are, to grow stronger in our um, racial diversity, not only in awareness and um, how do we be better as a company. When the BLM initiatives happened this year, I just did an audit of our own team and 25% of our team um, is non-white. And so I was really happy with a, even with, with that, we can always work to be better. Um, I think for us, of course, uh, diversity can mean so many things. One space in the tech space, especially, um, it's not that we have to work to be really proactive at is having female developers for And how do you um, do that? So I worked to get engaged with the lady dev group locally here. Anytime we post a job, I'm in there um, making sure they've all seen it, making sure that we are actively reaching out to diversify the team and the departments in, in all of the ways that diversification can mean. Um, I'm really excited. We just hired our first lady dev actually a few months ago, and it's been really wonderful, of course. Um, and, and a well-deserved, you know, position. And so, uh, but you have to be really proactive at like reaching out and finding that and encouraging that um, and showing people that you are welcoming of, of that diversity, I think. And I think for us too, we've recognized and just become more cognizant of the fact that that's a never ending process. So how do we stay on that? How do we continually grow in that? How do we not give ourselves passes on any of those diverse, um, uh verticals because we're you know in Iowa or some of these other things that I think um not intentionally but can happen um for companies and so we've put together our own strategies this year to uh even grow in that space we've got a consultant now that we're working with to help us grow on the racial diversity side whether that is for um proactively re recruiting uh, talent to us or the internal um, operations and making sure that we are our best in all different places. Great. Well, you know, since you've been in business nearly a decade, what metrics have you used in hiring to make sure that you're doing it correctly or successfully? Um, you know, there's several different, say the first area that there's metrics is when you're doing the actual hiring. So for us, we have goals, numbers-based goals to, for example, have someone in place 60 days or have an offer signed, excuse me, 60 days after a job posting goes up, for example. So we have to work really hard right when that posting goes up to um, get that job out there and make sure that's going to all the right places, getting in front of the right talent, and that we're moving swiftly um, internally. Pre-COVID especially was a very tight talent market. And so you have to be very proactive to make sure you're getting those really great candidates um, in front of those. Um, after they have started, we talk with our team. You've just started here or you've been here uh, several years about how important um, directness is as a company. And so right out of the gate, when you we set up 30, 60, 90 day plans with each of our team members to make sure that uh, their leads and them are moving in alignment of expectations. And so we um, also have a very robust onboarding process that's both um, robust as a introduction to happy medium over the first few weeks and all of those details and then a robust training program on your actual role. And so we certainly believe that um, the more time you put in on the upfront and the training and clarity, 
statistically often shows that that they just have such better chances for success um, long term, and and both is good for the company and the team member, of course. Um, we don't. We are not a company that focuses necessarily on um, trying to, you know, have a percentage, a certain percentage of people who are leaving or how long people are staying. We are very focused because we're such a small team on making sure at all times we just have the right team in place for what we need at that moment. Um, I think people can get really lost in uh, making sure that they're hitting this certain percentage of um, how many people are leaving or how many people are staying and all of that. I think at one point when we were doing that, I kept feeling like we were more focused on forcing square pegs and round holes because we were trying to hit certain numbers rather than focusing on um, outcomes and successes. And so I've worked to, although we have had those metrics in the past, um, I've worked to transition that because I felt like it wasn't necessarily ending us up always in a bigger picture success. So as a digital, digital agency, what type of customers are you working with? Yeah, um, we are really excited. We've become a uh, FERPA, HIPAA, and gram leach Bliley compliant agency, so we can do a lot in the compliance space. Um, FERPA is the education sector, gram leach Bliley is the banking sector, and HIPAA, of course, is the health sector, so a lot in the compliance space. Um, yeah. And then um, product development uh, through those areas and others as well, and then um, you know, a lot of media, but definitely we do a lot of focus in the education space, which has been especially an interesting time that so much of our education work that we do is online and online university. Um, and, and then we're so excited that last year we started engaging in doing all the media for the University of Northern Iowa. And so all variances and everything in between as far as the education sector goes. Um, and and that's been really enjoyable. Great. Wow. So do you focus more on the tactical execution or more the creative side? Yeah, definitely. We um, are very proud of the fact that we are a unique agency in the way that our dev team and then our media team is our two largest teams. And so um, we, I think I said in the beginning, but we like to, you know, refer to ourselves as a team that builds digital and web products and has the creative and media team to tell those stories of those products. So um, the Iowa Finance Authority is a great example of a, a website that we built that has really incredible um, you know, integrations to support all of the great work that IFA does. Um, but then we also do all of their creative and their media to drive additional um, awareness to those um, services. I see. So have you had to take two different skill sets and combine them into one role? Or since you've got such a minimal talent pool, have you had to finagle uh, skill sets from that perspective before? Yeah, I think that people see that a lot. I would say in our early days, we did that frequently. And now we do it so much less. I am as you know, much as we are certainly values focused and all of that, we are incredibly focused on putting the best skill set in place. Um, for that role. So for us now, we would parcel out um, like a copy editor, for example, we do not have the level of work that we need a full-time copy editor, but I also don't want my copywriter who can somewhat copy edit to necessarily be um, responsible for something that truly needs like a good skill set to execute well. Um, and so we outsource copy editing to a copy editor that is an expert. In so we've moved more to that model of having um, still those specific skill sets, but working with people that um, need or are able to work, you know, the amount of time that we need rather than having some of these, I call them unicorn positions um, in the office. and making sure that uh, it's our best work across the board. Yeah, we're certainly looking for a unicorn now, uh, trying to fit a creative role and copyright role together. Uh, so interesting. 
I do think one nice thing that has come out of COVID is that there are a lot of incredibly talented people that want less than full time. Um, and so you can find this, uh, these really great skills, skilled workers um, that are available more in a way that they maybe wouldn't have been in the past. And I think that sure. businesses should definitely take advantage of that. It's great for the company and it's great for the team member. Yeah. I mean, speaking of COVID, do you see that your team will head back to the office like they did before or will you stay remote? Have you guys made any decisions on that end yet? Um, I think that we will just focus on going back to our old policy of wanting to see you in the office at different points during the week. I think that I will have people who were fibers before and never utilized the remote work position that now see benefit to that. So they won't be here as often. Um, and that's okay. I will say um, I made the decision about a month ago to have our leads come back in the office, which is about five of us, and asked them to come two to three days a week. And our office is, uh, you know, about 5,000 square feet for two to three people in here at once. So it, it's a pretty safe situation for them. I believe that we have better alignment and collaboration by that transition, hap transition happening over the last month. Um, but I think that's hard to know. And I think some of that is not even the collaboration or the alignment that comes of being together. It's just simply the COVID getting out of your day to day, never leaving your house routine um, that I think we as leaders are challenged right now with finding that balance between pushing our team to be their best still during this time. Like we are a pretty fast moving agency and, you know, we don't want to file this under giving up two years in the history of our business. Um, but I also want to be supportive to what's going on and to what team members need and um, their mental health and any way that I can do that. And so I think it's a really big challenge that I'm talking to business owners almost every day right now because it's so unprecedented. Um, so I'm trying a happy medium, a balance uh, between, you know, fully work, remote work um, and kind of pushing that envelope to see, does this improve on all of those different levels that we're talking about? And if it does, then how do I find a way to safely offer that to other team members? Yeah, well, I mean, wrapping up, certainly want to thank you for the opportunity. If you had an opportunity to talk to yourself 10 years ago or give a last minute advice to somebody who's starting your journey now, uh, what would you tell them? Uh, what would be the best way to uncover talent in flyover country? Yeah, I think um, be picky. It's okay. I think, you know, in the tech space, especially, maybe we don't have as many candidates in some of those specialty positions. For us, we've worked to say, um, because remote work is already one of our standards, when it makes sense, we do hire fully remote team members that have skill sets that we need that, that aren't here in the state and feel comfortable with that and focus on the output and really quality work uh, rather than, um, you know, forcing everyone to be butts and say and, and having that as a priority. I'm definitely more focused on the output and quality of work. And so, I think too, just knowing um, that your standards and how much time you as a leader spend every day showing up to support the talent that you have uh, will will foster making sure that those goals get done better than ever. Well, thank you, Katie. Um, thank you for from Flyover Tech Best. We certainly appreciate the time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pete. It was good to talk with you.